Hey, well, I'm gonna show you the biggest issue that I see beginning stakeholders running into as, as they get started. Here, you can see there's a weld going in there. Uh, you know, you might think it's going okay, but it could actually be going a lot better. And what's happening is notice how long that arc is and how far that metal is having to jump over to the material. That's really the biggest problem I see is too long of an arc. And when you have too long of an arc, every other issue with your technique just gets exaggerated, right? If your rod angles are off, if your movement's off a little bit, all those things are going to have a much bigger effect on your weld and cause more problems if your arc length is too long. And so just by tightening it up, it makes quite a bit of difference. Now today we're running 7018 and the arc length that you get can actually be a little confusing. You know, if you look at a rod after it's been run, notice how that metal core is sunk down into the flux, right? So it's been uh, melting back in there. That means that part of your arc is actually concealed by that flux. You don't actually see the whole thing. So you have more of an arc than you think when you're running with a rod like this. Now as uh, I weld along here, notice with this uh, shorter arc, when I tighten things up a little bit, it's running much better. It's much easier to see that weld puddle. I can read the puddle, make sure things are filling in and, and everything is going better. But you know, let's talk about what makes arc length difficult to control. First of all, when you're first starting out, I remember just having an arc struck and being able to weld it all with any kind of an arc. That was so exciting, it's worth having a party for. You don't wanna stick the rod well, the reality is if you're sticking your rod part of the way through the weld, probably you need a little bit more amperage, right? You need to be, you have enough amperage to hold a good short arc length and, and maintain that control. Now, another issue is just overall positioning. You know, this is one of those things in life where the way the world works just works against you because you're trying to weld along, you're trying to hold a short arc, but you're running the wrong way on one of those moving walkways at the airport, right? The rod is melting off while you're trying to keep it in there. So you have to work against that um, as you go along. And uh, doing that can be a challenge because through everything, it's good to stay steady. I like to stay steady by using a second hand to triangulate and prop up. Usually I'll do it something like this if I can with my hand and my elbow and then pivot around there. Sometimes I'll instead just collapse my hand down. The problem with both of those is there are often limitations. You know, here on the bench, it's easy to just kind of pivot down, but if you're working on a trailer or something like that, you can't end up in a situation where your hand kind of gets jammed when you're moving along. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I can't really get it out of there and I'm trying to weld along and, and that causes all kinds of problems. So before you run your weld, it's good to think about um, where are you gonna go when I end the weld? How short's my rod gonna be? Give yourself a little extra margin and okay, can I move from there with however I'm pivoting and sliding and bracing? And sometimes if you can't, you've gotta just tuck your arm in close, kinda triangulate yourself back here and do the best you can moving like that. Now another contributing factor to this that kind of exaggerates the whole thing has to do with the size of electrode you're using. Now for this demo here, I actually am using 3 seconds of an inch or 2.4 millimeter uh, electrodes. That's a little bit smaller than a lot of people run, at least, uh, you know, 7018 like this. A lot of people use the next size up. But uh, I, I like to use these for thinner material like this 1 8 of an inch or 3 millimeter thick plate that we're running today and um, it's nice because it, it gives you just a little bit smaller uh, weld pool and, and you can control that but on the flip side you typically have to feed a little bit more of the electrode in um, to make sure that you don't end up getting any undercut right because as you're watching the weld puddle move along it's important to make sure that it fills up the whole thing where it's melted out 
and so you don't end up with a little region that's melted out but not filled in and you get a low spot called undercut. So that creates an additional challenge when you're welding with these smaller electrodes just to be aware of, leave yourself a little bit more margin um, as you're, you're feeding your way in. Go ahead and take a look at this weld that I ran here with the long arc in that demo. Um, it definitely leaves something to be desired. There's quite a bit of undercut up here on the top plate and, and the overall appearance isn't all that smooth. And the reason that you have that is as that arc comes off of your electrode, it actually forms kind of a cone shape. And so that spreads out. So it's melting just a ton of metal away here um, without having the control to fill it back in. And so we, we run into some problems with that right there. Now, on the other hand, with this well, where I'm holding the shorter arc length, there really isn't any undercut on it and the weld is overall much uh, more smooth and I imagine I probably have even more weld penetration down in there um, as I ran this joint. So you know, I, I know which one of these two welds I'd like to have and it really is just a simple change and one thing to watch. So keep an eye on your arc length and running some flat weld beads on plate can be really helpful to be able to dial in that technique and uh, make sure that you're keeping your arc nice and short. Well, thanks for tuning in. If you learned something here, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.